On June 29, in Johannesburg, South Africa, the disparate journeys of two giants of the combat world finally merge in Carnival City. Men that have captivated fans for near on a decade meet in the hexagon. This is the chronicle of their shared quest for the EFC interim middleweight championship of the world. Well, it's all come down to this. The main event of the evening. For one combatant, it will be a homecoming of epic proportions, a quest to regain a title relinquished four years previously. Welcome to season two of The Fighter. For the other, it will be an opportunity to show the world a devastating talent that has burned in the darkness for so long. This is the countdown to EFC 80. It's the 14th of June, and EFC middleweight contenders Gareth McClellan and Brendan Lazar have gathered for a media conference before EFC 80. The biggest event of the year. In two weeks' time is the finale for the series. It's taking place on the 29th of June at Carnival City. The men have just completed photography for the TF2 competition, where they served as opposing coaches. Their rivalry runs deep. I think if we can kick off with today... On June 29, they have the opportunity to finally settle the score. I think the first question goes to Gareth. <laughs> Okay, so what do you want to be when you're big? I want to be a superhero. And what do you want to be when you grow up? I want to be a superhero. I want to be a superhero. I want to be... Hulk... Smash! <laughs> Jiu-Jitsu! Yes! 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 reminder every day of what it's about, what it's worth. If you ever want to have great mentality and be able to teach yourself patience, you need to just drive in South Africa. I think it's an art on its own. On the way to conditioning, where uh, the machine is fine-tuned, that's one of the tough sessions of the day. Here we are. Time for the pain. McClellan is one of the organization's most legendary athletes. In 2009, he was the very first man to compete in the very first bout in the EFC hexagon. Welcome to EFC for an incredible card. Awesome fights on this one. Incredible action from top to bottom. Leg kick trying to find that range. Very advancing forward throws up a on kick. On that seminal day, he revealed the potential that he would one day fulfill. And Garrett slips in the choke. It has to be a matter of time. That looks deep. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is that. Gareth McClellan wins this fight with a rear naked choke in the first round. I always 
was always a, a thought in the back of my head. Um, was I was I doing the right thing? Was following this MMA dream the right path for me? You know, um, and uh, I think that was just the stamp to say, you know, you're doing the right thing, and, and there's so much more out there for you, and just keep pushing hard. He's got some of the nastiest ground and pound in the business, and this is oh, this the is trouble. ground and pound at its best. Rolls for the arm, gets the arm ball. Guys around South Africa watching, give me a hoorah! hoorah! I was incredibly focused. I think that period, that two years, year and a half that I was uh, was working towards it is probably the hardest I've ever worked in, in my MMA career. It was amazing for South African MMA. It was really the turning point. We're a real-time sport. We're a sport that people want to see. I think the hype around it was incredible. I'm not like anybody else you've ever fought. McClellan's notoriety and pedigree was sealed in his legendary rivalry with fellow EFC athlete Jeremy Smith. EFC 12, McClellan versus Smith. And I think it lived up to, to the hype. I think it gave everybody what they wanted. This is the main event of the evening. Nice combination by Gareth. It's ferocious here at EFC Africa 12. That's the end of the first round. You know, going into that fight, I was really calm. I was really focused. I just really felt I'd done everything right. By Gareth that time back is just dangerous. Oh, he's got the choke in. He's got the choke in and he's got the hooks. Trying to cover the mouth. Gareth tightens it up and Jeremy gets out. Oh, he's working away at the ribs and the face of Smith. Well, I saw the fresh. Smith is just very cautious here not to make a mistake. As soon as he does, Gareth is going to sink that choke in. Slips oh, out of the guillotine choke. Back they go. Both fighters putting their bodies on the line here. In one round three. Oh, that kick landed that time by Jeremy Big that shot. time. Big oh, left hook by Jeremy. Time. Hard oh, oh, punch nice landed by Gareth. Dex in a camp round four yeah. about to get underway. So it takes one single mistake from either guy, and that'll be all she wrote. The men battled over four Take rounds down until a misstep brought Smith the, the opportunity to submit. Deep guillotine oh, choke. Trouble for McKellen. Deep, deep, deep guillotine choke, and he's got the victory. Jeremy's got the victory. It was really heartbreaking. It was uh, it was tough and and I, and I really really took the wind out of me. But in the same respect, it gave me a, a new fire. And there was nothing else in, in my mind. I just wanted to be the champion again. I fight to make cheddar. I feel like Floyd Money Mayweather. Dethroned, McClellan showed the grit he is renowned for, fighting his way back to both a chance to settle the score and reclaim his title. It was weird, it was just, it was, it was so slow and it was so peaceful. But yet it was just so fast. It was just, I, just this, whoop, and it was over. He is the best middleweight on the African continent. McClellan defended his title twice, setting up a date with future champion Drikus Duplessis, the man who currently holds the belt McClellan quests for. He was this young kid who was exceptionally hungry. You know, he had put his hand up and he was rightly deserving of his opportunity. I just, I remember him coming out really fast and really hard. Man, I just knew that patience and experience would, would guide me through that. I just stayed one step ahead of him. And I think the experience showed in, in that space. It just started to wear on him eventually and, and slow him down and slow him down. And... It looks like Drikas is out oh, and he's out he's done it. And he's put Drikas Duplessis to sleep. Until he, uh, he he couldn't he couldn't keep it up anymore. He proves yet again that he is the best in this weight division.
McClellan and Lazar were in constant rivalry throughout the TF2 competition. Yesterday, you spoke a lot about heart, Gareth, and you spoke a lot about strength. And today, we get to test both of those with you guys. So how it's gonna work is you guys are gonna hang from these bars by any means necessary and not touch the floor. That means that you can use your hands and your feet. The only limitation is you can't use the back of your knees. How long do you think you can hang? <laughs> Uh, as long as I have to. <laughs> it is critical that your coach wins this challenge because he will then be determining who is going to fight who and which fight is going to happen first. All right, let's go. OK, one, two, three, let's go. Come on, let's go. A rivalry that played out, both in their efforts to keep their teams on a winning track and further to gain the mental upper hand as each tested the other ahead of their own coming battle. I think the more you move, the more pressure you create on your body. I think you needed to find a spot where you could be comfortable and just, uh, you know, fight that pain in there. Remember how much is at stake here, guys? That's not the knees, Ux. Don't worry. There's some quivering going on here in these calf muscles, I won't lie. Brendan, you spoke about strength. Just remember what's on the line, bud. Gareth is calm and collected. He stayed in the same position the whole time, hasn't even twitched. One last warning, you go beyond there, you drop. Competition's done. Brendan, keep your ankles on that thing. You're getting one last warning, buddy, that's it. Okay. Okay, done. Brendan. Done. Any victory that you can take out of these little challenges is always a good thing, progressing to later on to when we compete against each other. Do I think Soldier Boy is one up? Not at all. It's not how you start, it's how you finish. At the very next team outing, a vital aspect of the character of both coaches was revealed. The first team challenge. That could be the uh, challenge. Brendan and Gareth uh, head to head. Today is not a fight pick challenge, it's a prize challenge. We set out 60 kilograms, 132 pounds worth of water on the trays there. You are going to need to take those bottles of water individually up this way, put them on top of the podiums at the top. Once all the bottles of water are on the top of the hill, the entire team can run up and help place the water on top of the podium. OK. You ready, Kayla? You ready, Jackie? One, two, three, let's go! Go, K -Rock. Oh, my goodness, she's gone for the big, go, more water approach. Go, 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 go. Brandon told us, like, OK, grab so many as you can, run over and just drop it, run back. All right, ladies. Yeah, the moment when Gareth conveyed the advice of throwing the bottles halfway down the grass patch, and I thought, that's it, we've taken this one. A little bit of a miscalculation. I thought I had a good process, but unfortunately not. Okay, one at a time. As the filming of TF2 progressed, the differences in character and inevitably the dynamic of the coming fight became clear. Go, 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 Kayla! McClellan is a strategist, interested in deconstructing the fighting game to reveal hidden advantage. Lazar is a straight shooter. His style is go forward and clean. Don't stop, Becky. Time, team, Strategy. We won the challenge, and I think it was almost a whitewash, if you want to call it that. Oh, I thought it was going to be quicker, but it didn't work. Yeah, that was good. On June 29, their disparate <laughs> styles collide. Thanks for giving them that wonderful advice and strategy. I hope you bring a similar strategy to the fight against myself. June 29th at Carnival City, Coach McClellan and Lazar, plus the remaining TF2 finalists, will collide. Tickets and broadcast information at efcworldwide.com. So as soon as I wake up in the morning, my day is a fight. Hey, you guys hungry? <laughs> Can these guys sit at the table? Uh, you know, getting up with three children. Hello, please don't miss. Hello, please don't miss. Clav, please don't miss. 
So I reiterate that every time, please don't miss. But wait, watch the space. We might have egg all over the shape. Mm. Loves fruit, veg, they eat anything. Lunch boxes, they never want to wear the outfit that I picked for them. You know, they've each got their own little individual characters and spirit. I like this. Yeah. You know your boys. A big muncher. Can I ask you a favor? Will you take your plate to the seat, please? Got yes, I'll give you guys a piece now. No, I've got something for you. Relax, relax. Excuse me. Cut. <laughs> Let's go. Let hey. me see who's going to have the shiniest teeth today. Yes. Yeah, Babs. Get your toothbrush. It's a new one. Yes, that's your new toothbrush. That's it. I did you good boy. Okay, let's go get shoes on. You are so needy. Love you, Babs. I love you. In fact. Ah. This is too big. I'll tighten it now, yeah. Got. Oh, that's where the fight starts, is just getting them up in the morning, you know, dropping them all at school, um, obviously preparing for my day between work and training, and it's, it's, a, it's hard work. See, that was a nice good morning today, eh? Nice. See you a bit cool. later. Thanks very much, eh? No worries. Our project was really good yesterday. Mm, they're very nice, eh? Morning, Tom. How are you? Hey, well. Bonjour. Hey, Tom. I was about 25 years old. I decided, uh, you know, I want to start getting a bit fit now, and I ended up buying myself a boxing bag. Thereafter, I had a mate of mine that said, you know, we're doing some jiu-jitsu, why don't you come down and try it? And the rest was history. You know, I never had any desire to jump in the cage. And now I've sort of learned the ropes and I feel comfortable with it and at ease of actually getting in there and fighting. In September of 2017, the perfect opportunity to further his career appeared when Lazar was chosen as a contestant in the first season of The Fighter. Watching the EFC since the beginning, seeing the, the talent that was on the shelf, um, you know, I always knew that I could compete with any of these guys. You know, I want to try to push myself and test myself, and uh, that's what it came down to. Entering the show among a collection of undefeated middleweights from across the globe. Welcome to the very first season of The Fighter. Lazar was the unnoticed underdog, proven in his placing as last pick for Team Syed. But both coaches and contestants discounted a vital factor, the strength of will that Lazar possesses. My fight IQ was really on a higher level than a lot of these guys. Even though they came from much more reputable MMA gyms from around the world, And that's, that's what was the difference, you know, is, uh, you know, my desire to get there. Win it by unanimous decision, Brendan Lazar. Yes, boy! I'm going all the way, man. I'm pumped. Lazar's grit revealed itself in the hexagon when, bout after bout, he overwhelmed opponents with an impossible-to-stop mentality. Brendan the descendant, yes, Lazar against Batamag Bertrand. You know, the guys thought I didn't have a chance, 
Uh, but I never let any of that get to me. Um, I know my worth and, you know, I proved them all wrong. Battling his way into the last four, Lazar drew a bout with his teammate and roommate, Australia Shardin. Um, yeah, sure now we know that it's all business. No, like we still stay in the same room, <laughs> help each other really? wait, cut. Really? Are you ready? Let's fight. The ties of friendship did not affect Lazar's quest, however. And after dispatching Dean, he booked himself a place in the final. That was by far the, the biggest win of my career. And uh, Shaw was an unbelievably dangerous opponent. Yeah, going into the fight with Ibrahim, um, I was always confident in my skill set. And uh, it, was a, it was a tough challenge. And we are live from Pretoria, South Africa. This is EFC 66. We have the finale of the fighter season one. That's going to be huge. You know, I'm always confident in my own abilities and skill set. And you know, if you go that far and you, you compete with yourself, you've always got to have that belief that you're going you're gonna to make it or you're going to win. Otherwise, you shouldn't be in any competitive sport. This is the Fighter Season 1 Finale! At the same time as McClellan was plying his trade in the UFC, Lazar entered the hexagon and underdog and made a brutal final statement on his right to be called champion. In attendance that night was incumbent champion Duplessis, the man who lies in waiting for the victor on June 29. I want to see a face off right now because this is the future of the middleweight division, ladies and gentlemen. While Lazar and McClellan conducted the battle of their personal challenges throughout the filming of TF2, it was the performance of their teams, athletes they embraced as family across the seven weeks, that provides the real fuel to the fire of the coming fight. The two men's differing personalities were revealed in clashing coaching styles, while McClellan dug deep into the reservoir of his athletes, demanding dedication, development, and complexity. Lazar took a far more hands-off approach, allowing the already developed skills of his fighters to assert themselves in the fight. I think Brendan's a, an incredible competitor. I think he's shown that before. So it's a great fight for me, you know. I'm coming up against somebody who's just as hungry as what I am, who just wants to be as successful as what I do, and is going to fight just as hard. And I think uh, come the 20, uh, 29th, that's exactly what's going to happen. You know what, Gareth, being the experience that he has, being in the UFC and all the rest, I think it's the greatest opportunity for me and to put myself on the map thereafter. So I'm, I'm excited for this one. You know, we're going to take it out there and we're going to do our thing, and I'm, I'm excited for the opportunity with Gareth. On June 29, You're gonna know me. compatriots born You're of the same nation, molded by shared opponents You're in a common fighting me. world. He's unorthodox. He does a lot, of, a lot of weird things, and I think that catches people by surprise. Will I make the same mistake that other people? Most definitely not. He's a little bit irrational at spaces and makes, makes mistakes, and when he makes them, we need to punish him for it. None of this phases me. It'd be really silly if he was to underestimate me. For me, that's what it's about, is just winning and beating him. Separated by paths that have taken them on vastly different trajectories. Defined by an outlook as unique as their respective lives. I've been around the block, I've seen a lot of things. I've had to work harder, work smarter, can prepare for a certain person and what he's watched and what he's seen out of there. What he faces in there is gonna be very different. If I implement everything that I know that I have, then there's no way I can lose this. 
I will be the middleweight champion again. I'm dangerous, and if you overlook me, I will hurt you. You know what? Uh, a lot of people haven't seen my full potential, and I think this is where things are going to go very differently in this fight. Finally, they collide. Well, it's all come down to this. June 29th at Carnival City, Coach McClellan and Lazar, plus the remaining TF2 finalists, will collide. Tickets and broadcast information at EFCWorldwide.com.